Hey everyone, this is Cindy with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks for joining me today on my channel. I am excited to bring you today three fall home decor DIYs using items found at the Dollar Tree. I really hope you like these um, DIYs using items that you can easily find and that you can make look nice for your home but on a budget. So before I get into the rest of the video, I just wanted to ask if you like this video, if that you'll please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me grow my channel. And if you'll go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more budget home decor DIY videos, for Monarch Monday videos, I also do some planner videos. So hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you join our Monarch Mom DIY family and then hit that bell notification so that YouTube will inform you every time I upload a new video. With all that being said, let's get into our fall home decor DIYs. For our first project, I'm using one of these circle mirrors from Dollar Tree, one of these surfboard shaped wall hangings and some foam board. The first thing I'm going to do is take this surfboard shape and I'm going to trace it six times on the foam board and then cut it out with a uh, rotary cutter. Um, you could also use one of the utility knives that you can find at the Dollar Tree. I just happen to have a rotary cutter from my other crafting. Next, I'm taking some Waverly chalk paint in the color Maze, and I am painting all six of these surfboard shapes with this yellow paint. Once the paint is completely dry, I am cutting each of these six surfboard shapes, not exactly in half. They are 14 inches long. I'm cutting them at nine inches and five inches and doing this for all six. Next, I'm taking this darker yellow apple barrel paint called King's Gold, and I'm just going around and kind of giving some accent on the larger pieces. So these are my six pieces that measured nine inches in length. Now with my five inch pieces, I'm actually gonna paint over the maze with the King's Gold and paint each of these smaller pieces solid with this darker yellow. While those are drying, I'm going to pop out the mirror and the backing from this circle mirror. And I'm going to paint the frame of the mirror. Instead of black, I'm going to use this dark brown truffle chalk paint. It's one of the things I love the most about chalk paint is that it will stick to pretty much every surface, even this plastic. And here you can start to see what this project is going to look like. I'm going to first take my longer pieces and lay them out. There are six, so I'm going to hot glue them to the back of the mirror to look like six petals of a sunflower. While you're watching me glue these, I will also say, um, I didn't show this in the footage, but the smaller five inch pieces 
I did the same thing to them like I did with the larger pieces where I took the darker color and kind of went around the edges. I did that on the smaller pieces also with the truffle. You'll see that pretty soon when I start gluing those petals on as well. So here's what it looks like so far, kind of looks like a daisy. And now in between each of the larger petals, I'm going to hot glue the smaller ones that are painted a little bit darker. And I just really love how this turned out. It was just, I didn't really know how it was going to turn out. I just wanted to be creative and just kind of paint the sunflower petals. But I really love how it turned out and it's very lightweight. I didn't show this either in the finished. You could just um, set it on a table or you could just put a little jute twine on the back and make a little hanger so it could hang on the wall. And there you go. There is our finished sunflower mirror that cost us $3 to make. For our second project, I'm using two of these tag-shaped beach signs, a couple paint sticks, some sunflower florals, a buffalo check ribbon that I had on hand, and some green moss chalk paint. I didn't want to mess with taking the paper off the other side, so I just decided to use the back of these. I did paint them with Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. Then I wanted to give them a little bit of a palette or shiplap look. So I'm just taking this paint stick and using it to draw lines on it with my black paint marker. And once I had done that to both of my tag shaped signs, I was ready for the next step. I decided that I wanted my tag sign to say give thanks. So I'm using these stencil letters that I've showed you before from Walmart, they're folk art, and I'm tracing with pencil, G-I-V-E for the word give, and then I'm going to freehand cursive the word thanks. Next, I'm just going to take my painter's marker made by Elmer's, I get these at Walmart, in black, and I'm just going to trace the pencil outlines of the word give, and then my cursive thanks. Here you can see what it looks like after I filled in the letters and went around the cursive words a little bit more. I laid the two signs out how I wanted them to kind of hang a little off center and just attached them with a little bit of hot glue. Next I'm going to take some of my buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to create a bow. First by making two of these loops, one is a little larger than the other, tying them together with a knot using some jute twine. So there's my larger one. Now I'm making a slightly smaller one and then I'm going to hot glue those together. Thank you. 
I will also say this is a wired edge ribbon, which does make it a little easier to kind of fluff up the the bow parts. Now I wanted a piece to go around the center, but I needed to make it a little skinnier. So you'll see here, I will take a few, or like four rows of the checks. I still wanted it a little skinnier, so I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller yet and tie it around the two bows. The last step for our bow is to make the tail. So I just took another piece of the ribbon, folded it in half, and then I'm going to hot glue it to the back of my bow. Using a pair of sharp scissors, I twisted and made a hole in the center at the top of each tag and used some of my nautical rope. Here I'm just kind of playing around with some florals I have, some leaves, um, just to kind of see how I want to decorate this top part of the tags for my sign. I think this is one of my favorite parts of doing DIYs is I get an idea and I'm not exactly sure how it's going to turn out until the very end when I see my finished product. So once I had it all how I liked it, I went ahead and hot glued everything down. Now I'm going to attach my bow to the nautical rope. I'm going to tie a little piece of twine just so it gathers a little bit there and then hot glue the bow to that place on the rope. And this is what my finished tag sign for the front door looks like. I really love how this turned out too. For my last project, I'm gonna use four of these signs. They're about four by six inches, some nautical rope, some leaves from the Dollar Tree, and some chalk paint. The first thing I'm going to do is paint over the blue and gold. I'm going to give each box sign a good one or two coats of the white just to cover up any of those other colors. I had never seen these signs before in my Dollar Tree. Um, they're, they're more substantial, I would say, than the regular box signs that we see. Um, the back, instead of being really thin, the sides are the same thickness all the way around. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but they're very solid box signs. Once the white paint was completely dry, I decided I didn't want them quite so bright and a little bit more neutral. So I'm using Waverly chalk paint now in the color ivory, just one coat to kind of soften up the color a little bit. Next, I'm going to take six of these brown uh, tumbling tower pieces that are from the Dollar Tree. Um, I did not paint these. There were some sets a little while ago that had half the pieces brown like this and half the regular color. I'm gonna take two of these and glue them together to make three stems for my pumpkins. I wanted to make three different sizes of pumpkins with these four 
box signs. So I'm actually going to glue these two together to make a taller, wider pumpkin. Then the other two signs, one will be tall and one will be wide. I didn't like that line that was in the middle where I glued the two together, so I decided to take my paint stick again and just draw some lines to make them look like palette wood. Then I'm going to take some of the brown truffle paint and just go over those lines a little bit. Um, then I will rub them out and actually I even used the eraser on that pencil to smudge them out a little bit. I didn't worry about the lines being perfect because these are wanting to be more of a farmhouse rustic look and as you'll see in a little bit I really like how they turned out. And here you can see more what they looked like when I smudged out the lines. Next, I'm just going to take my tumbling tower block stems and glue those to the top of each pumpkin. And I will finish off each pumpkin by tying some jute string around each stem. And then I'm going to add some of the leaves from the Dollar Tree. As you're watching me finish up this DIY, I just want to thank you once again for joining me today for these fall farmhouse decor DIYs using Dollar Tree items. I would really love to know in the comment section which one of these three was your favorite. And if you have any questions about any of the techniques I used or any of the products, let me know in the comments. And here's how my pumpkin trio turned out. I really love it, it's super neutral, and these are going on my front porch this fall. Thanks again everyone, and I hope you'll check out some of my other farmhouse home decor DIY videos. See you next time, bye.